you all were under a lot of stress, no doubt. I saw you losing weight. I saw people threatening you. They, when the independent media was out front, we had all kinds of terrible things done to us. Was it was the stress such inside the embassy that there were some meltdowns? I mean, you all hang in there to pretty good, pretty good. I don't think there any meltdowns. I think we handled it well. We kind of joked about being an unintentional community <laughs> because <laughs> we all kind of came together for various reasons, but it wasn't like a plan that we were the people that were going to come together. Uh, and we had a variety of ages and backgrounds, and it seemed to work really well. And when we had these times that were very high stress, like one night when they were literally trying to break down one of the doors, um, we once that settled down, we kind of all got together in one of the rooms and we just started talking about how we felt at that moment. We just went around the room and each person talked. And it, and it just became like each one of us kind of reaffirming our resolve and why we were there and why we felt so strongly about this. And so it, it really did feel like it, it was amazing. People took on different roles. They took on, well, I'm going to handle the kitchen. I'm going to handle cleaning. I'm going to handle, Security. you know, mm -hmm. shifts that we took, you know, 24 hour as a day, we had people, you know, keeping an eye on the building. Um, it just seemed to happen really amazingly well. Together. But you know, there were times like we were worried. There were times that we were worried about like food running short. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And we were trying to figure out how we get food in. And we, after we discussed it, we really gave over our confidence to the people outside who were supporting us. We knew there were people outside who were uh, cared about us inside and who have a lot of experience of their own on dealing with uh, law enforcement and how to get things done. And we had some fantastic food deliveries. Um, I, I saw some, some very <laughs> dramatic footage. I, I actually was taped one of them. Um, I mean, the Jesse Jackson one gets, yeah. will get a lot of coverage. Yeah. Uh, but we had some much larger mm -hmm. food uh, deliveries that uh, took, how many people were involved in that one operation? One was 21 people. 21 like people involved. 4 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, the front how, did, how did you pull that off? That's, we didn't we pull didn't. it off. They right. did. They did. They did. Okay. We, we gave our confidence, and sometimes we, you know, we were nervous about that, but we had to give our confidence to the people outside, and they came through. And, uh, and then David was our director of food security. <laughs> uh, and all security. All so security. David. I, I call him the food czar, but he doesn't like that. <laughs> David, you're the food czar. Tell me how you pulled this off. This, this food thing, this was the crux of it. Battery power, food, water. You, you seem to come pull it together. Right. In, in hindsight, it was, seemed to be maybe a little overkill, but um, we didn't know how long we were going to stay. Um, I guess our said a number of times, I think if we really thought about it, we know they weren't going to let us stay there for months, but we were prepared to stay for months. Mm -hmm. And the food uh, was probably the bigger problem because it was, was it took a struggle and a secret plan to get any more food, whereas the water we were a little better situated. But um, in terms of what you said before about the stress, what helped me in that, and I think some other people, to further our resolve and be disciplined about staying there was uh, for me personally, I just thought, well, this is just a little taste of what people in Venezuela, and not just Venezuela, other places, and facing really right-wing mobs, threats, um, just a small taste. And I just, it, I just couldn't um, say to myself, well, this is too much. You know, it just had to um, continue with that. And it just gave me each day more a clearer picture of the character of these this these protesters outside who were trying to take over the building illegally and just strengthened our resolve to keep them out. And we, we had discussions about how to address them and how to relate to them. And I think we sort of came to the conclusion mostly to the best weapon was to ignore them and not show that we're being intimidated by the lights. And we put mirrors to reflect the strobe lights back to them and, and just not making eye contact and getting into arguments, which just seemed to you know, embolden them. But um, it was uh, a new thing for me and a lot of other people, but... Uh, a new thing, David. Yeah. Uh, but it, it kept us determined to, uh, that we were right and um, to keep in there as long as we could and as safe as we could. You know, so, I, Kevin, you're I, laughing. I, I, have no doubt, I have no doubt when the police arrived and looked in our pantry 
and and saw the amount of food we had yeah, just 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 we food. had stored and how much water we had stored. They were they realized we were serious when we were talking about saving. They, they, we they realized about us have, about going back and having a feast. I know. I mean, really, it was we had a lot of we were we, we, were, were, we, were, we were being very cautious. Thanks in my part, they were. Yeah. But I also want to say that um, we had a big uh, poster inside that someone had painted that yes, said yes. "Amor y Resistencia," love and resistance, and we had that from early on, yeah. and and I just kept going back to that like like. That we were surrounded by all this hate, but inside, I think we had a lot of love, a lot of resistance, and outside with the supporters that came every day and gave us strength, literally gave us strength to stay in there. And then the comments and from Venezuela. Constant, constant, oh, like, so you know, people love. outside would go, we love you, we, we love you, and we'd do it back to them, and, and we were getting these messages of solidarity from Venezuela and around, and I was just like, this is the key. They're hate, but we can beat that hate. With love and resistance, and that's that attitude really grounded me and helped carry me through this. There were protests in Caracas. That's right. They were holding up signs with your all's names on it. We were amazed by oh, that. Oh, that was we just were, so we touching. Yeah. 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 You no, all it was really became moving to get the messages of love. People were making just individual videos and sending them to their friends who they knew could send them to us, and we were getting videos from all over Venezuela of just individuals saying thank you and sending their love and I mean it I, I didn't feel like I needed that because I just felt so happy to be doing something that felt so important I mean it was far less stressful than you know my day-to-day -day work environment you know so we still don't say that it's not work now you're on tape <laughs> but, but you know I mean just to do something that had such meaning and that is so important and to be doing it with people who shared that conviction really overrode any of the possible personality differences that might have arisen in an intentional community kind of <laughs> situation. Um, and then, you know, having all of the love from our supporters on the street, or, you know, the people who were the outside MSC protectors, because they were doing just as much, um, if not more, than we were. Um, and, and from, of course, the people in Venezuela and around the world, I mean, that was just an additional wonderful, um, really life-giving um, bonus. So. What does this say to other movements? How can they use this as a blueprint for movements where you've got a handful of people standing up against a Leo, uh, a lion, a huge superpower? You know, I, the, the lesson that we've learned over and over again in our work is that our job is to go where you're not supposed to go, <laughs> say what you're not supposed to say, and refuse to leave when they tell you to leave. <laughs> yeah, right. I think that's a pretty good, that's a pretty big lesson right there, you know. And, uh, th and uh, it's a second lesson, I think, from this. You asked, did we win? And, uh, you know, th this is just one chapter in a campaign. So did we win? We made a lot of progress toward winning. And so when they arrest us and remove us illegally, uh, that negative action is we are going to turn into a positive for the movement. This was a lot of people that were involved in this, from people who came to public events. Some, some nights when we thought we were going to get raided, we had as many as 50 to 70 people sleeping in the embassy. It was hard to even tell. There were so many people. People were doubling up in offices. We didn't know where we were living. So many right. people. Right. And, and then all the people that came outside and supported. So I think that, you know, we could not have done what we did without the other people. We could not have held out as long as we did without other people. So, you know, it's really about that solidarity is really critical, that movements need to have it. Understand that even if you're not the one that's there at the end who's arrested, that you still play just as important a role. You are still just as much a part of this as, as anyone else. And just, you know, also just have courage. I mean, a lot of it was just have courage and trust that we would do what we thought was necessary to do and that it would that it would work out and and just kind of turning yourself over to that that this is so important that it's not about me and and we're just going to do what we can do and, and I hope it works out <laughs>